was now about noon, and darkness came over the whole land until about three in the afternoon, for the sun stopped shining. And the curtain of the temple was torn in two, and Jesus called out with a loud voice, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. And when he said this, he breathed his last. As we reflect on the sixth and the final words of Jesus in the Gospel of Luke, creation begins to reflect the magnitude of Jesus' sacrifice. At midday, darkness falls as Jesus passes. The physical expression of evil's perceived triumph reminds us today that when we turn away from Jesus, the result is always darkness in our hearts, in our minds, and even in our bodies today. Luke records that the curtain of the temple is torn in two. The curtain that separates the Holy of Holies, the place that symbolized God's very presence was torn, exposing the heart of God and allowing access now from all to come to God, just as they are. However, in this moment, when evil is perceived to have won, Jesus reminds us that life is more than physical, more than that which, which we touch and we see every day. In his last words, he points us rather to our real home. Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. Friends, we see that Jesus chooses the cross. At any moment, Jesus could have changed the circumstances of the cross that we are reflecting on here this evening. The one that raised Lazarus from the dead, the one that instructed Peter to the supernatural catch of his life, the one that turned water into wine could have at any moment left the cross. The nails that were on that tree did not hold Jesus there, but as, as Pastor Ed reminded us last Sunday, it was his love for you and his love for me that held him there. Make no mistake, as Jesus utters these words, the physical and spiritual pain that he is experiencing is unexplainable. But he is fully in control. Jesus chooses the cross. Jesus' life is also not over on the cross. The words that Jesus says that we are reflecting on are actually a quote from Psalm chapter 31, verse 5. This, during Jesus' time, was a common prayer that parents would teach their children and they would often recite as they lay down to sleep at night. Much like lay me down to sleep, they would say, God, into your hands, I commit my spirit. In this prayer, Jesus is expressing that in this very moment, God is his refuge. That the deliverance that he will experience is just moments away. His spirit is eternal. And he's about to experience a transition, not an end. And at this moment, when the world seems to stop. Luke looks ahead and points us to where Jesus is going. You see, friends, like Jesus, we too are eternal creatures in a temporary experience. A few years ago, I was listening to a message from one of my favorite pastors, Pastor Matt Chandler, when he made this statement that we are eternal creatures in a temporary experience. And that struck me. 
It stuck with me. You see, this is a reality that should impact many of the decisions and the values, the positions of our hearts that we hold today. But our life is more than the temporary. The temporary is a gift, and it should be cherished. But our spirits and our life is eternal. You know, there are times in life, though, where we can become too focused on the temporary. Last week, I was driving in the car with my family when a good friend of mine called me. I hit the phone on my dashboard and said, hey, Mark, how you doing? He said, I got a quick question for you. He was focused on the temporary. He said, my son wants to get a tattoo, and I wanted to call you to get God's opinion on it. Should he do it or not do it? He was focused on the temporary. I could tell by his tone that this father did not want his son to get a tattoo, and I could hear from his son in the background that he did want to get a tattoo. Now, I always love these questions when I'm traveling 70 miles an hour down the freeway with my family in the car over speaker phone particularly when two of my family members have tattoos. <laughs> so do many of my friends who are pastors and close followers of Jesus. Now to be clear, I believe this is a personal preference. Leviticus chapter 12, verse 28. God is speaking to the Israelites and he's helping them navigate the temptations of their day. He, didn't, he did not want them to have the marks of slaves as they had when they were in Egypt. He didn't want them to fall into the pagan worship of the Canaanites or worship Baal. And he was instructing them not to follow those patterns, but to be holy and to follow him. Today, however, this is morally neutral. As I prayed in a, that moment, as I was driving the car, I asked for wisdom that was greater than my own. And I reminded my friend this truth. Hey, we, like Jesus, are eternal creatures in a temporary experience. So I told him that the real question that you should ask your son isn't about whether or not we get a tattoo, but what are we doing with the temporary gift that God has blessed us with? These bodies that he's given us are on lease. We didn't earn them. We didn't purchase them. We didn't create them. We don't own them. They're a gift for a period of time. And like Jesus, there will be a time when we turn them in. So what we put on them, what we put in them, how we use them, should we reflect the gift that they are? But one day, like Jesus, we will turn them in. And like Jesus, our souls and our spirits are eternal, and we will experience a change from the temporary to the eternal. Into your hands I commit my spirit. Friends, we should live with this perspective each and every day. When we look through the Gospels, we see Jesus living with this perspective as if he was passing through. He enjoyed his life on this earth. He invested his life on this earth. He made it matter, but he didn't cling to his life on this earth. It was part of the journey. And at this moment, when some thought it was the end, he knew very clearly where he was going into your hands I commit my spirit. 2 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 1 through 4 scripture says this for we know that if the earthly tent we live in is destroyed we have a building from God an eternal house in heaven not built by human hands Meanwhile, we groan, longing to be clothed instead with our heavenly dwelling, because when we are clothed, we will not be found naked. 
For while we are in this tent, we groan and are burdened because we do not wish to be unclothed, but to be clothed instead with our heavenly dwelling. So that what is mortal may be swallowed up by life. God made him who had no sin to be sin for us, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, into your hands we commit our spirits. We give them up to you. You alone give the breath of life, and you alone Breathe on us, your Holy Spirit, and make us new. The life which you give us at birth and the life you gave us at our new birth comes from you. In trust and surrender, we yield our whole selves to you. Use us as and when and where you will. We are no longer our own. In glad surrender, we are yours. Through Jesus Christ, 